Hi and welcome to this online training video for Automation Studio. In this video, we'll be looking at the multimeter and the oscilloscope. To do so, we'll be going through three demonstration files and explain you how to use those instruments. So let's get started. When in simulation mode, you have access here to multimeter and oscilloscope. To activate them, simply click onto it. And here we have a multimeter that looks just like the one in your lab. So to get a measure from any of those serial or parallel or mixed circuits, first I'm going to choose the DC voltmeter. Now the probes are coming out, so I can take them, place them on different points where I want to get the measures from. And there you go, we get a read in volts. This is pretty much the easiest way of using the voltmeter. Now, if you want to use the ammeter, one has to know that the ammeter has to be connected in serial. If you connect it in parallel in your circuit, the internal resistance of the ammeter is very low and will shortcut your circuit. And if this was a real multimeter, there will be a risk to blowing the fuse. So to be able to open a circuit to connect the ammeter in serial, we have to use the disconnect tool. So in the troubleshooting, you can activate the disconnect tool and a screwdriver will appear. To disconnect a line, you first have to choose a node you want to disconnect from and then the line you want to disconnect. Once you selected the origin port, you can select which line you want to cut. So I can cut it this way and then this way. I can select this node to disconnect it that way. So you can do multiple disconnects with a disconnect tool and reconnect all of them at once with the reconnect tool. So this will get pretty handy for using the ammeter and the ohm meter. So let's see here, we have a read of 6 milliamp. So I'll disconnect my line. And now there's no current anymore. So I can connect my probes there. And the 6 milliamps are back. The final mode I'll be showing you in this file is the ohm meter. To test a component with the ohm meter, it is usually a good practice to isolate it. So the disconnect tool will be once again very useful. So once the disconnect tool has been activated, you can now come back, disconnect all the lines that are required to be disconnected in order to isolate your different components. And now taking my probes, I can test the internal resistance of the resistance here and check for the continuity of my lines as well to make sure that they're not broken. So now we've seen how to have a look at the DC circuits. I will look at an AC one. In this motor control circuit, we have a three-phase source that powers our motor with a control circuit. Pretty much similar as the one we worked on the previous videos. So let's say I start my motor and I take out my multimeter. Here for the tension, you select the AC version of tension. Now I can measure with my probes the difference of tension in between two phases, for example. So pretty straightforward. To measure the current, same as in the DC one, we have to use the disconnect tool. And now I can connect my probes. Disconnecting this line has removed one phase from my motor and you see now 
the motor does not like it. So by reconnecting my probes, here you've seen at first an error message. You may have noticed that at first the voltmeter was showing an error. This error occurs when the measure red is over 10 amps since it's over the usual upper limit for the ammeters on a common multimeter. The high current consumption was caused by the motor starting back. So now that we've seen most of the major modes of the multimeter, let's open another file and have a look at the OCO scope. In this file, we have a three-phase AC source going through a rectifier bridge and the bridge is connected to a resistance that will act as a load and a capacitor for a smoothing device. To activate the OCO scope, you can find it in the troubleshooting. And here we have a very realistic interface for the OCO scope. We've got all the different channels with their buttons to adjust them, either the vertical scale and the horizontal scale here as well. We have the probes that we can toggle on and off. And there is that ground option here to have either a single ground or multiple individual ones. For the next example, a common one will be just enough. So we can start by connecting our probes first to the ground. Now with my first probe, I will want to read my first phase. Now we see we've got a very nice SYN signal. Then I can connect my second probe to the second phase. And my third one to my third phase. Now we have a perfectly standard three-phase source. And to see the rectified signal, I'll take my fourth probe and read the tension in the resistance. Now you see the blue phase is overlaying each peak of tension. So this tension that goes through the resistance is only positive. It has been rectified. Now to avoid all those drops of tension and make a signal that is smoother, we can use the capacitor right here. The higher its capacitance, the more energy it will be able to charge and discharge in order to keep the blue signal here as straight as possible. So you will see the more I raise the capacitance, the more the blue line will be straight. So you notice the more I go up, the straighter the line is. That's what we call the smoothing effect. Thanks for watching this online training video for Automation Studio. We invite you to watch the other videos and we'd like to thank you for your time.